Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Viditam Nina Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Uta Padakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavam Sha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Sadvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindo Dinabando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshvari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Go Premanande Hare Hare Bo It's a great pleasure to see so many devotees here today taking classes from Srivast Pandit Prabhu and uh I had no idea the class was so large. So congratulations to all of you who are going deeply within the Shastra studying like that. And uh, I study with Srivast Pandit Prabhu also. find great, great benefit from doing so. And welcome to all of you who are here uh, visiting from various places around the Bay Area who have come here to find some peace peace of heart, peace of mind. This is the place to find it. That's why this uh, <clears throat> building is here, to provide a sanctuary. We're not doing it whimsically. We're not inventing anything. We're following the formula given to us by our teacher, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, called Acharya. It means one who teaches by example. And an Acharya teaches by example by also uh, taking shelter of a teacher who also takes shelter of a teacher in a line that goes back to Krishna. And in this way, those who are interested in it, in finding real peace in life, find the right formula, the authorized formula. And that can be discerned by looking at guru, sadhu, and shastra. Guru means a teacher. Guru actually means heavy. Someone who's heavy with knowledge taking from the right source. And sadhu means those a general body of practitioners who are very faithful to the teachings, who are showing in their daily lives. Sadhus can be in the renounced order of life, they can be in the retired life, they can be in the householder life, they can even be governors like Ramananda Roy, who was a governor but at the same time, although in politics, he was even a teacher for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sarvabhamavatacharya was a householder, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, even the dog, a dog in the house of Sarvabhamavatacharya is dear to me. He made comments about dogs frequently, about even a dog in the villages, so forth. So, Shastra means that which cuts through maya. There's shastra and shastra. 
Shastra means a sword and Shastra means the scripture, but it's the direct words of Krishna and those who have studied Krishna's teachings and followed them in their lives and have explained in precise detail the process of spiritual life. There's Shruti, which is considered the breathing of the Lord. It's actually eternal. It's always existing. Sometimes we see it, sometimes we don't. And Smriti means the explanation of the Vedas, which is very important, especially in this age, because it's very hard to understand the Shrutis on one's own. So I thank all of you for taking the time to come and sit in here for a little while in this environment. It makes it worthwhile for all of the devotees who volunteer here on a regular basis to maintain. And it takes quite a bit. It's like running a business. Every one of you who have a house or apartment or any, any other kind of stake in the world these days knows that it takes a lot of work to just maintain a small dwelling, a little business, something like that. And a temple, too, also takes a lot of work. But it's a labor of love, because the devotees know the meaning and the importance of having such an, a, an atmosphere available for the people of the Bay Area. There aren't many. Most are retail outlets that would like to sell you something. And there are hospitals, of course, which minister to the physical body. You do have to have insurance. And there are a multitude of institutions all over the world, but very few of them actually talk about the soul in a well-reasoned way, in a way that one can systematically cultivate a practice in one's own life so that one can experience for oneself what is one's connection with the divine source, Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the devotees who volunteer here, who maintain this place, they feel that they have that connection and therefore they want to share it with others. Therefore they take the trouble to maintain this building. There's a board of directors that meet regularly to talk about how to keep the water on, the electricity, how to continually make improvements in the infrastructures so that people will be attracted, how to improve various programs. There are many departments here with devotees who meet regularly on conference calls. Even though they're working very hard, they meet once a week, twice a week, talk about how to make improvements as they move forward, just so that it will be more attractive, more accessible to people. And then devotees here go out all over the Bay Area door to door. Today is a culmination of several months of very intense, intensive but joyful work on part of the devotees who are all volunteers here going door to door and shop to shop, business to business all over the Silicon Valley for the last three months offering the Bhagavad Gita, finding people who are allies who also like to help in seeing the teachings of Bhagavad Gita spread far and wide and so forth. And precisely at 5.40 p.m. tonight, in about an hour and 10 minutes, we're going to have an offering of the results of that, what we call a marathon. It, the poster you see on the wall here, it's every month, you'll see a large poster here. It's renewed during every, what we call MSF. That stands for Monthly Sankirtan Festival where we invite everyone in the community to work together for a common cause as a team. And the particular common cause we have here is to reach out to people wherever they live, to give them especially literatures about Krishna consciousness, very particularly Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, and many other books too, and recordings. We also pass along sanctified food, Krishna Prashadam, and we go out uh, occasionally to chant Hare Krishna in areas like Palo Alto and San Francisco where people can walk by and appreciate the chanting. 
So that'll be tonight at 5.40. And tonight we're going to talk about That was the longest pause in history. <laughs> We're going to talk about how to make a comeback. Everyone likes people who can know how to make a comeback. I know Bill Clinton called himself the comeback kid. I remember during the election, he was almost counted out. And then I think he won in New Hampshire, came in third place in New Hampshire, which was a big win for him. And finally came back and became the president. We know from watching sports, everyone loves a big comeback. Somebody's way down, one team's way down, and somehow or other they pull it out in the last inning, in the last few minutes or something like that. And how do you, where do you get the strength to do that, make a comeback? And all of us need to know the science of making a comeback because one way or another in this world, there are slips and falls, there are ways in which we're up one day and down the next because of the power of the mind and the way in which this world fluctuates. There are going to be ups and downs and difficulties. So first in this presentation called How to Make a Comeback, we talk about what's a good stance to take to begin with, and that is to follow this regulative principle. The regulative principle is one should not fall from his exalted position. This is one of Prabhupada's very profound statements that he makes in the seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. One should not fall from his exalted position. So whatever exalted position you're in, as a, a mother, a father, a son or daughter in good standing, a teacher, spiritual master, president of some, whatever situation you have now, whatever exalted position you've been elevated to, it's a regulative principle that you should not fall down. So how does one avoid falling down from one's exalted position? Prabhupada once told us, you're not sufficiently afraid of maya. And this is uh, the main attitude, not being careful, not being afraid of maya. Maya means illusion. We're living in the world of illusion, by the way, in case you haven't noticed. The Shastra tells us that there are various realms, Goloka namni nijadamni tale chatasya devi mahesha haridama suteshu teshu te te prabhava nijaya vihitashta yena govinda mari purusham maham bhajami Sri Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma, who's the most intelligent being in the universe, he has a, a very broad perspective because he's at the top of the universe. And he has a lot of power, so much power that he can create worlds. Krishna's using him to create. And quite a perspective that he has. And he's telling about the various graded realms in this material world, graded realms. There are various states of consciousness which pervade these various realms and the realm we're in is a realm in which we must be very careful. As the Srimad Bhagavatam says, padam padam yad vipadam. In this realm we're living now, you can have a misstep at any, at any moment. This is called vipadam. You can be walking along, minding your own business, without a care in the world and thinking that you're doing everything right, and then everything can suddenly go wrong. You can step in a hole that someone left open and fall in and never be found again. That's altogether possible in this realm that we live in. There are many things that we can, uh, many ways that we can slip up. And this attitude, what me worry, is pervading this world. In fact, Yudhishthir, the great 
devotee of Lord Krishna, when, when asked what is the most amazing thing in this world, he said, people don't realize, they don't even think about the fact that it's a dangerous place, that at every moment, living entities are being delivered into the jaws of death, but everyone individually thinks, but I won't die, but I'm okay, that'll happen to someone else. Therefore, one must be vigilant. This doesn't mean that one is so hypersensitive that you can't walk around in the world with a smile on your face. It doesn't mean that you're so wound up that you can't have relationships with others. But there is a way in which we must be vigilant, aware of the fact that we're living in a realm in which there can be slips and falls and there's danger at every moment from Maya. The great Thomas Jefferson said, the price of liberty, eternal vigilance. We have a kind of liberty when we are, that we're given, we have free will. But that can be forfeited also if we slip up. So we have to beware of Maya. George Harrison, anybody know George Harrison? Raise your hand. He sang a song about this. Beware of Maya. She will hit you. She will hurt you. So you have to beware of Maya. Beware. This is a good, good word. Beware. Beware. Watch out where you're going and how you're acting in this world. Because Maya is there at every moment. How far away is the darkness when you turn on the light? Just to switch away. One switch away. You just... Turn it off for one second and back is the darkness. So it can revert at any time. So we should beware. So Maya presents packages to us. It's not that Maya looks all scary and carries a sign saying, Hi, my name's Maya. But there are many different packages that are perfectly suited for each victim. Now I know that sounds a little extreme to call victim, but we do become victimized by the modes of material nature. Krishna talks about this in the Bhagavad Gita. How the modes of material nature are gunas, they're ropes, they're very strong, and they affect us in various ways. We actually, big news, have nothing to do with this material world. That is stated in the in the Shastra, that the living entity actually doesn't really mix with the material world. This is not our home, this is not our resting place. A sango hyayam purushaha, we have no real sangha here. But somehow or other, we become enamored of Maya. And she'll present various packages that are perfectly suited for us. Oh, that's for me. It comes in very subtle ways. She comes in very subtle ways to present us alluring circumstances. Oh, just one time I'll try this. No one will notice. And severe circumstances. People sometimes think, well, I'll just try intoxication once. There are cases of people, even famous people who should have known better, educated people, took intoxication, they died upon doing so. And what is the feeling as the living entity who's been given the opportunity to take a, a rare human body out of, a, out of whim, being offered some attractive package, I'll just try it once, and then it finds him or herself having to leave the body. Or more likely people become so entangled that they rue the day that they accepted the package from Maya. So one should be vigilant and be careful of what you're accepting. So here's how Maya sneaks in. And Prabhupada talked about how, like a silver tongue salesman comes to your door and knocks on the door. Best thing is don't open the door. Because once you open, then that person can talk you into buying a $2,000 vacuum cleaner, even if you already have one. Oh, that one you have? That's no good. You take this. 
I know it happened to a friend of mine, and his wife came home and said, we already have a vacuum cleaner. He said, but, but, but this one's much better. <laughs> so Maya is always waiting at the door. You have to not open the door, and here are the ways in which we do open the door to Maya. Pride. Pride is the way of thinking that I have something in this world. I am something in this world. And that opens the, the door for Maya. It says, here's an opening for you. And then when we become lax, lax means I let down my guard. I stop strictly following my spiritual practices. Then, invites Maya into the house. Doors open, I become proud. I'm a great such and such, a great so and so. And then I become lax in my spiritual practice. So, please come in. She won't stay long, it's okay. Justification welcomes Maya as a permanent resident. Once she comes in, then there's a tendency for one to say, well, it's okay because I can't help it because. And when one gives justification, then you invite Maya to stay permanently. You can just hang around forever, Maya. I'll never get out of this because I'm a victim and I can't. So what are the three? Pride, laxity, and justification. I think a cousin of justification is entitlement. I'm entitled to special treatment because I'm such and such. I was reading the other day, someone was saying how the more advanced a spiritual practitioner becomes, the more he or she becomes humble. And you'll notice this, if you associate with very advanced devotees, Generally, a comment you'll hear is, oh, such and such, so humble, I had no idea. They would be so humble. Of course they're humble. This is the hallmark of a person advanced in wisdom. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, 13th chapter, 8th verse, that the first sign of knowledge and the pathway to knowledge simultaneously is humility. Because one realizes that I am helpless, and I am an eternal servant of Krishna, and I am insignificant. How should I become, why should I become prideful? So pride opens the door, then laxity says, come on in. You can have a seat, you can sit down, have a lemonade. We don't mind. We're lax around here. And the third is? Justification. Justification. It's all right. <laughs> and that allows Maya to stay permanently. If I give entitlement reasons, if I give justifications, she can hang around forever. So, here are some of the risky attitudes. I'm advanced. I'm liberated. Very dangerous. In fact, that's usually followed by, therefore I can. I'm liberated, therefore I can take liberties. This is laxity. It comes with this pride. I'm liberated. I'm initiated. I'm part of an organization. I'm from a certain family. I'm from a high birth. Therefore I can do whatever I want. All these are not attitudes of advanced spiritual personalities. I can cut corners. That's one that happens frequently. In most disciplines, someone will develop the willpower to get in good physical shape and go on for some time, hopefully. And then at some point, the mind will start to say, oh, you can start to cut some corners now because You've worked so hard, you deserve it. One little corner cut here, one little corner cut there, and next thing, you're back where you started from or worse. So being vigilant, being careful, don't cut corners. Take the, round, the long way around. 
I'm independent, another risky attitude, that I don't need anybody. Now here's how to lock the door on Maya. Safe attitudes. I'm not liberated. I'm in need. I'm never above chastisement. Always looking for correction from superiors. What was that? That's coming up. <laughs> I added it. And here's one. Oh, Lord Krishna, please help me. Uh, I was speaking about Gajendra for about four days when we were traveling recently. Everyone know Gajendra? Oh, Gajendra, now, Gajendra had a good life. Gajendra was the king of the elephants, lived in the heavenly planets, which is much better than here. Doesn't get cold, perfect temperature, the most beautiful kinds of fruits and flowers, and all the varieties of animals. And all the animals were afraid of Gajendra. That's a nice feeling, isn't it? <laughs> Gajendra had a beautiful family. He was the strongest of the strong, and so forth. And there's, there's, a, there's a term. I'm not sure which coast it comes from, maybe East Coast. When you got your car all shiny, it's a nice car, you want to show it off. You got your best clothes on, full bank account, you're feeling healthy. Driving down the road, open the window, and you lean out like this. Like, I'm the king of the world. This is the body language leaning outside the car like this. And in, in New York, East Coast, they, they call that copping a lean. You're copping a lean. You're leaning out the door, like, drive with one hand, like, I'm the coolest cat who ever lived. <laughs> you know, slide back in your seat a little bit, lean out the window. I'm good. I'm really good. I don't need anything. I don't need anybody. I'm copping a lean here. And this is what happens in the material world. Everyone starts copping a lean. They start thinking, I'm good. I, I, I'm, I'm young. I won't, I won't die for at least a million years. <laughs> or I'm rich. That makes me smart. I have so much money. And in that mood, in that attitude, copping a lean, Gajendra was walking through the jungle. He came to the beautiful lake and was bathing his family there, enjoying the sense of all the flowers, watching how the pollen from the lotus flowers was strewn across the lake surface in many different colors. And just without a care in the world, in the most serene place in the world, suddenly, <laughs> crocodile grabbed onto his leg and wouldn't let go. And Gajendra struggled for a thousand years. And I was reading the Bhagavatam carefully in the section of Gajendra. And Vishnath Chakravarti Thakur says in one comment that the moment that Gajendra accepted that this is my karma. He got the intelligence to begin offering prayers. The moment it came into his mental system that I shouldn't have been copping a lean, <laughs> that this is a result of my past karma, and I am helpless, that's when he got the intelligence that came into his mind to reach out. You see the lotus in his trunk? He's holding it up to the sky, and from his mouth came beautiful prayers, offering to the Supreme. And at first, he didn't even know who the Supreme was. He just knew in his heart, I need help. And I'm praying from the bottom of my heart for help to the Supreme in this universe, whoever it might be. And Lord Narayan heard his prayers and came down and liberated Gajendra. So this attitude we can keep all the time. It's our prerogative to keep this attitude. We don't have to fall into Maya. We don't have to cop a lean. We can take shelter of Krishna. And it is heroic to take shelter of Krishna. In this world, people think the heroes are those who can mock Maya, who can cop a lean their whole life. 
until somehow Maya comes and sweeps them away and then one says, well, they had a good run. It wasn't a good run. It was stupidity. The real intelligent person takes shelter of Krishna throughout life and holds on, always praying to Krishna. The prayers you offer in the morning, when you wake up, the prayers you offer at night, they're all being heard. And that is the proper mood to stay in at every moment and realize, Krishna, I need help. Please help me. We can keep that prayer going constantly. It's the greatest protection from Maya. Therefore, we chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. And even if you don't feel like it, this is the power of the holy name. Actually, Rupa Goswami says, Vacham Vachakamit Yudeti Bhavato. That there's a difference between the name and the named. And that's amazing because in all the Shastras it says, Binat Vam Nama Namino. There's no difference between the name and the named. But now he says there's Dvayam. There's a difference. And the difference is that the holy name's even more merciful than Krishna because he makes himself available even to fallen souls in the material world. And then even when you don't feel like chanting, even when you don't feel like surrendering, if somehow or other you can get your tongue to move and you can say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, which means, oh Krishna, oh energy of Krishna, please engage me in your service, please protect me. And if you can just do that, even mechanically at first, because you don't feel like it yet, then, then Rupa Goswami says, you'll be plunged back into the ocean of bliss, which means feeling your connection to Krishna. And you'll be able to overcome the sloth, which hangs over everyone in this material world like a thick fog, in which we have to shake off regularly. Every day, isn't it? You have to start over. You can't think, I've done this for two years. I'm good now. You're not good. You're in process. You're in the ship. Don't get overexcited. Ten years, twenty years, a hundred years, it doesn't matter. As long as we're in the realm of Maya, you have to be careful. And you have to continuously go on making this prayer. Prabhupada says, this is liberation to have this attitude. I am the servant's servant a million times removed. Humble servant. And this service attitude opens the door to this world for us because we actually are servants of Krishna. And if we live in the world of Maya and we think that we can be little exploiters, then we'll be exploited. But if we think, I'm the servant, 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 we'll be provided with unlimited service because there is unlimited service for all of us to do in service of Krishna. And in the Sri Chaitanya Charamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, wear this verse, which is given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, around your neck, Trinad Api Suni Chena. This verse says what we all need to hear over and over again. That's why he says, wear it around your neck as a necklace. So what does that verse say? I'm as humble as a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige. I'm ready to give all respect to others, and I don't want any respect in return. If you live like that, you will be in a liberated state constantly. But then don't let that go to your head. I'm more humble than anyone else. That's how tricky Maya is, and that shows how sticky the situation is. The moment you think, I am so humble, and you're cultivating humility, you may be chanting intense japa, thinking in a very humble state of mind, then suddenly Maya will say, but you're the most humble. <laughs> and you chant better than anybody. And then suddenly again, captured by Maya, so that's why it's heroic for someone to actually live 
in this constant state of connection to Krishna. And now, how to make a garland? There are several jewels in this verse. One is to feel oneself lower than the straw in the street. That's a jewel. Another jewel, to mean more tolerant than a tree. Another, to offer all respects to others. Seeing that they're spirit souls. This is Krishna's definition of a learned person in the Bhagavad Gita. Vidya vinaya sampane brahmane gavi hastani shuni chaiva shapake cha pandita samadarshinaha. When I say that verse, I think of Radha Swami because he quotes it so much. It's such a powerful verse. Everywhere he goes, whether it's a TED talk or he's speaking to the bankers of the world, he tells this verse and everyone can relate to it. it says that the learned person is one who sees beyond the body doesn't see that there's a difference between the Brahmin and the outcast and the cow and the elephant. On one sense, difference, yes. Doesn't go up and pet the tiger. <laughs> it's not an unwise person. But at the same time, the person has respect and sees Krishna, spiritual souls within the body of this person. And one who sees like that is actually a learned person. That's a jewel, to be able to see and think like that and actually have deep respect for, for all other living entities. Judd Bharat would not step on an ant. Therefore, when he carried the palaquin of Maharaj Rahugana, he was recruited because they thought he was a dumb person, but he looked very strong. And they were missing a palanquin driver. This is from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Little did they know the spiritual journey that Judd Bharat had come on from being Bharat Maharaj who had been distracted by a deer, extremely distracted, taken birth as a deer, remembered his past life even as he was a deer and then took birth again and remembered the past two lives. And now he was Judd Bharat and he pretended to be a completely ignorant fool and couldn't take any instruction because he didn't want to deal with the world at all. And he was picked up as a useless person who had some brawn, so he said, carry the palanquin, and he was jostling the palanquin and the king because he didn't want to step on one ant. King Rahugana chastised him for that. And then they began to talk about, Jad Bharat finally revealed that he was a Parham, Paramahamsa and told him about spiritual knowledge. That's a long story. But it just reminded me of Jad Bharat. He wouldn't step on an ant because he saw, with great respect, there's a living entity there. So these are all the pinnacle of perfect knowledge, the result of perfect knowledge, to have this awareness. So one should take these jewels and string them as a home project. You have to stop at Michael's on the way home. That's a hobby store, in case you don't know. And get yourself some string and then string these on there. It means you have to consciously and with great deliberation and determination, put them on a string, put them around your neck. And in all circumstances of life, remember to apply them. There it is, the mantra of the week, the year. What is it? Anybody do their homework yesterday? One, two, three, four, five. Yesterday during class, I gave homework that you have to use this phrase sometime in the day. When something comes up, someone tells you, no, you're wrong. I live to be corrected. <laughs> if you keep this mood in mind, which is parallel with what Krishna says in the, what Lord Brahma says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, that one should learn at every moment from the environment, I live to be corrected. We will not fall into maya. Now, here comes the part I advertised, what to do if you slip and fall. Whoops. Here's, a way to, here's how to make a comeback. Srila Prabhupada, advancement in Krishna consciousness depends on the attitude of the follower. So attitude is everything. Change your attitude, change your life. Remember, anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. 
Isn't it nice to think that tomorrow is a new day with no mistakes in it yet? So we must remember that failure is the pillar to success. That life's not over when you make a mistake. You have a chance to build on that mistake and actually come back stronger. And that's what Prabhupada meant when he said this frequently. Failure is the pillar to success. You learn, learn more from failing and then coming back again. And you become a more mature person from that process. And you also develop faith in yourself that I can do this. I can overcome obstacles. I can make a fool of myself. I can actually slip and I can get back up again. Knowing that you can actually do that and how to do it is very important. And it is, it is the sign of a mature person. So one thing is don't go away. That means don't go away from the process of Krishna consciousness. Specifically talking about the practice of devotional service. Don't go away. Whatever way you can remain connected, if you have a slip up, or even if you have lo lose your taste temporarily, even if you're going on with your practice, but you lose your taste slightly, doesn't mean go away. Stick with it. Stay with it. Next is own the problem. Whatever situation you're in, take full responsibility for it. And say, whatever situation I'm in now, I've brought that upon myself. Don't be a victim. Otherwise, it's impossible to get out of the situation you're in. And the third is to chant constantly. And now we'll take just a few reflections from what we've talked about so far, just to, before I move on to the next part of the presentation, just so we can stir the pot, see what's in it. One thing that you heard that stuck in your mind, don't ask me a question right now, just tell me what one thing that you heard in your mind, that you heard that stuck in your mind. Shraddha, okay, go ahead. I leave to be corrected, that gives strength to Practice tolerance. I live to be corrected and practice tolerance. Thank you. I have also two points. You want to say, Mataji? After, after you go. <laughs> I'll be short. Um, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. I really like that because Maya is so subtle, she can just come in anytime. Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. Nice. I think our, uh, which I relate to one of the examples you said, I live to be corrected. Devakinandan Prabhu, the fundraiser, came here to ISB and teaching us training. And he made that when he invited the big, uh, you know, rich men to become, you know, give them. So he asked the question, we want to be directed, please give us how you wanted to expand ISKCON. So they are very happy that Generally, they go, people used to direct them. Now they are saying that we'll give direction. They said, oh, do this, do that, many other things. So as long as you show your humility and your submissiveness, the people open up their mind and give more directions. Very nice. And also, I have one more, um, the one which is humble. How the humble, I always remember that past times which I spoke many times also in earlier classes regarding um, the Brahmin who used to do his Gayatri in a perfect time, like 6 a.m., 12, noon, 6 p.m., every day. So he was likely, you know, making so consistency that I'm done. I have, so one day he thought I never missed my, you know, Gayatri throughout the, the time I have been initiated. So some, one day he was uh, sleeping in the daytime around 11.30 whatsoever. And then the Maya came into dream and she woke him up. Get up, dear Brahmin your time to come for doing the Gayatri and he got up and then he, do, he completes his Gayatri. The moral was there from the Puran, it is that because Maya wants to give him more inputs to be more extra humble so that he remains in, actually in Maya because he's thinking that I am very perfectly doing my Gayatri. That's also another way of, uh, you know, pride. Mm. So it's a combination of humility and pride how it is detected by Maya. Yes, Thanks. nice point. Thank you. Uh, Charu is in the back. She needs a microphone. Thanks. 
Hare Krishna again. I like when you said, own the problem. It is so universal, I need to understand more about it, I think. You said that uh, don't be the victim, but uh, kind of think that you created upon yourself. So st still need to, daily basis, I think, because as we walk out of the house or walk in the house, <laughs> you know, these things are always there that we face it day yeah. in, day out. Yeah, it, uh, one thing it, that it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that there's not law and order in the world. It doesn't mean that if there's a person breaking into your house, you don't call the police. And you just say, I should be humble and accept that I brought this on myself and let him take whatever he wants. Perhaps if you're a Paramahamsa. But what it does mean is that in an overall sense, one understands that I'm implicated in this world. I've implicated myself one way or the other in this world. And you'll find in the Bhagavatam that in the very beginning, first canto, when Dharma, in the shape of cow and a bull, and earth, in the shape of a, of a cow, Dharma in the form of a bull, were beaten by Kali. He had a stick, he was beating them mercilessly. And Maharaj Prikshit, who was their protector, came along. And he asked Dharma, who was it? Who beat you like this? And he would not name the perpetrator. Because he said, he who names the perpetrator is culpable for the same crime. And it's, it's very lofty philosophy, actually, in one sense. In another sense, it's very simple. The sense it's lofty is understanding how everything's going on by the force of kala, eternal time. Everybody gets exactly what they deserve, is a mantra you might have heard before. And to accept that for oneself, especially in a time of suffering, is very difficult, but it is the, not only the hallmark of the most advanced devotee, but it is, it entitles one to go back to Godhead. And that's what Lord Brahma says in his prayer, Tate anukam pam susamikshamano bunjana evatmakritam vipakam Hridvabhapur vir vidadam namaste jiveta yo mukti padesa daya bhak. And that is that the, the perfect devotee accepts that whatever miseries are coming to me in this life are a product of my past karma, my past activities. They're just coming back to me. So often, I'm reminded of things I did a few years ago. What to speak of things I did 40 years ago? What to speak of things I did last lifetime? I, I forget things that I've done or said sometimes, and people remind me, and I think, oh, how convenient, I forgot. Nonetheless, there is a reaction to everything I do. Even though I forgot doesn't mean that it, the, the perfect and equal reaction won't come to me. And I've been acting in various ways for many, many lifetimes, according to the Vedas. Anadi karma pale. Nartam Das Thakur sings that from a time immemorial, anadi it's beginningless karma. And the reactions to that are coming like waves to me. I think also in accepting, when, when there's an acceptance of one's situation and realistically understanding what kind of a realm I'm in and what I can expect from this realm, there's a kind of relief because when I'm hoping against hope that I'll find the perfect situation in this world and all the waves of past reactions will just magically stop, or if I just have enough money, they'll stop, that it's very disappointing and agonizing. But one who accepts, I've, well, probably used to use this phrase, make the best use of a bad bargain. First thing you have to accept, I got ripped off. <laughs> it's hard to admit. <laughs> 
What happened? I got ripped off. Most people, they get a bad bargain. They say, no, it's really good. <laughs> it's got some good qualities. But you'll see from the prayers of advanced devotees, they talk about how, oh, you know, I came to this dark material world out of a sense of rebelliousness and so forth. And they, when they're in that mood, actually, they're liberated. So seeing how uh, we are responsible actually empowers us because it gives us a chance to make amends and move out of it. Another reflection? Yes. Guru um, Maharaj, one of the problems I have, I didn't get the real meaning of this tolerance. I think that is what I'm facing now. The real meaning of tolerance. Would you mind to explain a little more about what is really the tolerance is? What is really tolerance? You want to look it up first? Tolerance is the, the act of tolerating something. First of all, while she's looking it up, just intuitively, do you have opportunities to tolerate various circumstances, people in your life? Pretty constantly, right? Okay. Please give the definition of tolerance. The ability or willingness to tolerate The something. ability or willingness to tolerate. tolerate. So tell us what tolerate means. An, al an allowable amount of variation of a specified An quantity. An allowable amount of variation. Of a specified quantity. Of a specified quantity. Um, its origin is tolerare. This means denoting the action of bearing hardship. Bearing or, hardship. Or ability to bear pain and hardship. Ability to what? Bear hard, pain and hardship. Ability to bear pain and hardship. Well, tolerance means that one accepts that there will be changes and various things will come and go in this life. Krishna says it in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita that there will be hot and cold and you have to tolerate that. You can't just try to readjust every time you get in a situation. You have, to, first of all, you have to have a duty, and you have to go on with your duty. In order to tolerate, you have to know first of all what is your goal in life, because if you have a goal, then you have something to tolerate for. It means you have to keep going because of the goal, and you can't stop doing your duty. Like when somebody dies in your family, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. It's a really drastic thing that people do. They drop dead. It's like the most drastic thing. When people in my family started dying, I thought, that's pretty drastic. <laughs> and all you can do is tolerate it. I mean, there's ceremonies for closure, and you could take their ashes and put them in the Ganga, and that's all uh, shastric and important, and you get closure, but you have to tolerate it. You have to just bear it. And in time, one understands that I have no connection with this world and the changes that come and go will come and go regardless of how I make my adjustments and become uh, a wise by tolerating. The tolerating desires that come because desires come knocking at the door and they say, I'm going to be here forever if you don't give in to this bad choice. But if you just tolerate it long enough, which is your free will. It's a use of your free will to say, I'm going to neglect that desire. I'm going to tolerate it. That's another way to do it, as we talked about yesterday, is to neglect it. Don't pick it up. Just let it be. Let it go on and burn itself out, basically. That desire will go away. It'll say, okay, I've stayed long enough. I've got to go now. And it, it, it doesn't have as much... You have to have more tolerance than those desires do. And gradually, they begin to diminish, and you start to see your higher self, that you actually have the power of free will to pick up certain things and leave other things. This is a great discovery, actually. One becomes very powerful like this, to see that I don't have to react to everything that happens to me in my life. And when I do tolerate things, I notice how they take care of themselves. Napoleon, you've heard of Napoleon before, right? 
I read something that he didn't used to open his mail for three months. He said, because 90% of the problems solve themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and so the point is the world goes on. There's, and, and one begins to see this as one tolerates the world's moving out, on around me and I don't react to everything. Reactions can cause a lot of problems, a lot of stickiness. You can become more involved, more implicated by taking them on one by one. So first of all, you have to know what is your duty and do your duty. And in the, pr in the process of doing your duty, you have to tolerate whatever inconveniences come up. And they will come from the mental side. They'll come from other people. It's like, why is this person in my life? I don't want this person in my life bothering me, crocodile on my leg. <laughs> but that's the way it is. This is the realm we live in, and it's a great learning realm to be in. This is the lesson. This is the lesson of this realm. If one, one is always trying to readjust everything to suit one's own sense of this is what I want, one's own desire, you, don't, you didn't learn the lesson. And it's stated by Krishna over and over again in the Bhagavad Gita, tolerate, tolerate, tolerate. One more reflection? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, like, I like the point of um, like Gajendra always. Um, it shows really our condition, especially in Silicon Valley when we are in high tech and really people in the state of Gajendra when they have all the facilities and they don't realize um, till the time they get that <laughs> crocodile. Those who are fortunate, otherwise some may not be so much fortunate that till the end of the life they may not get that opportunity. And sometimes even when the crocodile does bite people in the leg, then they deny it. This is another way of dealing with the world is denial. And I've seen it also, people who don't prepare themselves in this lifetime for the very fact that there's some major changes that play, take place, not the least of which is death. I mean, I'm sorry to bring it up. It's always a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't prepare, and therefore when it comes, there's a complete denial of it. I've seen it. I'll, I'll just watch television. It's not happening. I'll take this, and what happens, a lot of times people are very ill. They're going to die. doctor says, you've got, a, you know, you've got a month. The family's saying, you know, Dad, you've got a month. And they say, no, 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 I have this special medicine I'll take. The doctor will cure me. There's always, Maya always has some new cure. I've seen it over and over to bring the pill. This, this is special. You can't get it in America. It's, it's experimental. It only comes from Sweden. It's like, oh, it's from Sweden. This will, I can be saved now. And there's no recognition that this change is coming. Therefore, the very beginning of the Bhagavatam, when... Parikshit Maharaj asks, well, what do I do now? i got seven days to live. What is my duty? And Shukadev Goswami, the duty of everybody is get ready for death. That's a good duty. That's a good way to, to live, actually. You'll see the world differently. I'm just passing through. That's tolerance. This will pass by. I'm just passing through. Why get all upset about it? Why get all entangled in it? So, these are very practical things, and we're, we're in the right place at the right time to learn these lessons. And we have to learn them. If you're in household life, if you live with a spouse, if you live with family members, it's an excellent time and place to learn tolerance because the, you know, living with other human beings who have their own destiny and their own mindset, you have to learn tolerance. Otherwise, you'll always be upset. It's the senses. Your senses are tuned in a certain way, in a certain subtle way, and their certain senses are tuned in a subtle way. I don't like the way you chew. <laughs> well, I don't like the tone of your voice. <laughs> See, there's a discord there because of the individual living entities, and you have to learn to tolerate in order to be non-reactive in this world, not get more entangled. Okay, yes, one more. Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, this reflection was very short and sweet. Beware of Maya. Beware of Maya. Yeah, you can get the song, get the single, you can hear it over and over again. 
<laughs> Put it on your ringtone. Beware of Maya. So these three things, don't go away. Stay in the saddle. Wait till the horse settles down. Own the problem and chant constantly. You have to go on chanting. This will solve your, all your problems, guaranteed. I can say that with complete conviction because it's what all the Shastras say. Shri Prambhavati Dharma Ma Shashvas Chantim Nagachati. Konteya Pratidani Hinami Bhakti Pranashti. Krishna says, I'll save you. You just keep doing the process. And the process is to keep saying Krishna's name. It's that easy. That's how it's been essentialized in this age because everything else is difficult for us in this age because we're too tied up trying to figure out how the smartphone works. So we need a simple thing to chant Hare Krishna. Take me three lifetimes to figure it out. Okay, feel regret but not depression. We should feel regretful that we've slipped. But don't get all depressed about it and say, okay, well, I can't do anything anyway then. I'm no good. Regret, but not depression. And go step by step. How do you get back up? Whatever little step you can take, start it because devotional service is so powerful that if you grab on, just pick yourself up. And this can happen daily. I'm not talking about a big, huge fall down. I'm talking about from day to day. From day to day, the mind changes, and you aren't the same person today as you were yesterday. So now you have to go step by step. How do I get back up into my 16 rounds? Start with one mantra. Okay, that's too hard. Start with picking up your bead bag. That's too hard. Start with finding where it is. <laughs> Start with go ask your wife, where's my bead bag? <laughs> Start somewhere. Wherever you start, start, go step by step. You can, you can actually climb any mountain if you go step by step. That's why this miracle happened when we came up with this little chart that tells how to read the Bhagavatam in, in sections. So many people told me, I never thought I could read the Bhagavatam, but as soon as I got this little chart, it's called Be a Sage, page by page, and it tells you how to break it down. Eight pages a day, you'll finish in five years, no big deal. They say, oh, I could do that. And the same thing with any problem, any situation we're facing, break it down into the smallest steps. And if you don't even know what they are, just look for the next thing that you can possibly do to move in that direction. House is a complete disaster. What do you do? You don't even want to get off out of the chair. So you think, all right, I'll make a deal with my mind. I'll just pick up one sock. <laughs> and if you can drag yourself across the floor and pick up that one sock... <laughs> And somehow or other, with your, you know, all your strength, put it in the laundry hamper. Then you start to get momentum, and you can start moving in the right direction. So success goes step by step. It always does. Big shot is just a little shot who keeps on shooting. Focus on the fundamentals. Look for what are the fundamentals. There are a lot of different details and things that you can do that you can get absorbed in. Lots of different books you can read. But if you're if you're in a, a situation where you don't have a lot of momentum, go for what the fundamental programs are. Chanting Hare Krishna is the first. What's the second one? A second one? Hear the Bhagavad Gita? Get some good association? Go to the temple, see the deities? The very fundamental, basic things that you can do. Go for those. And then... As you go through life, remember these three words. Prabhupada used them frequently in different ways. I compiled them in one place. Strict, serious, sincere. I was going to say, strict, sincere, serious. Wrong order. Strict, serious, and sincere. These three words, think about it, how, what they mean, and make your practice, your daily practice, in whatever you're doing, like that. Also, keep your eyes trained to spot offenses because offenses can hinder your progress in devotional service. So learn what offenses are. That's why we recite the ten offenses against the holy name. There's also offenses in deity worship. There's also Vaishnava apparatus. Learn what they are and make your eyes aware, trained to spot these offenses so that you'll avoid them. Be an offenseless person in this world and you'll make quick advancement. Also, fortify. Keep yourself spiritually and physically fit. Prabhupada mentions these three items in the story of Gajendra. He said you should have physical strength. That means you have to eat right, you have to exercise, you have to get enough sleep, you have to be in the right ashram, 
you, this is Varnashram. You have to be in a place where, you, where you're getting strength because Gajendra was an animal of the land, but he was in the water. That's why he got defeated by the crocodile. So you have to be in a place where you're getting more strength. And if you feel happy, like when I get depressed, my wife says, just take prasadam. And I take prasadam and say, well, I'm the happiest person in life. See, I told you. <laughs> you just needed some prasadam. It, it's correlated. Our physical state, because we're in a body, we have to take care of the body. If I exercise, if I get some air, and I take some good prasadam, I feel happy again. I feel like I could go out and start over, conquer the world. But if I get uh, my blood sugar's too low, I'm not in the right state of mind. I'd like to welcome everybody who's joined us on the internet tonight. This universal community of hearing and chanting. Thank you for joining us. Please tell your friends. Hare Krishna. So, physical strength you must have. Enthusiasm you must have. Enthusiasm is the first in the list that Rupa Goswami gives for making advancement in devotional service. What is that called? Utsahan. Prabhupada said that enthusiasm is auspicious in any realm. Quotes a verse like that. It's auspicious everywhere. Any job you take up, you have to have a little enthusiasm. Right? <laughs> well, I don't know. So whatever you want to do. No, if you're up and you're enthusiastic, then the momentum, the energy around you will move. And sensual power you must have. You must have sensual power to, to stay fortified against maya. Sensual power especially comes from hearing. Chanting very good rounds. Chanting hard because it purifies the senses. Sarvopati vanir muktam tapratvena nirmalam rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti ruchate. There's a way in which when you practice devotional service, your senses get purified and they get strong. They get so strong that you, you can avoid circumstances that will wash away uh, people who are, have weak senses. You think, why would they do that? Why would they do that? Because their senses are weak. Make your senses strong. Just like you make your physical body strong, make your senses strong. Your spiritual senses have to be nourished by chanting, by hearing on a regular basis. Then you'll have strength to overcome maya. One ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So better prepare yourself and be on the side of prevention all the time than get really sick and fall into a, into a state. Then you won't be very happy at all. It's, it's harder to come back than it is to pre prevent falling down in the first place. Another is discouragement is Maya's tool. So here's some encouraging words from the Shastra. Prabhupada says in the light of the Bhagavat that devotional service is so powerful that even when you start it, even if one has no desire for it, by its own strength, Krishna will pull you along. But it's better to cooperate than have it to be dragged, isn't it? My mom used to take me to the, to the doctor to get shots and say you get ice cream afterwards if you're good, you know. And I, I noted a couple times, because I tried dif different ways. Kicking and screaming once. <laughs> Didn't get ice cream. <laughs> and the other times I just cooperated. And it's better to cooperate. So cooperate with Krishna. This is a heroic. You'll be dragged anyway, but better to go on your own. Servants of Chi Chaitanya Mahaprabhu need not fear, because this is mentioned in the 11th canto that even if there's some slight discrepancy, and there's all kinds of discrepancies in this age, in the way that we work and the way that things go on, uh, he'll help us. He'll help us through those. Take shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Such a person who goes on faithfully practicing devotional service will be surely promoted to the stage of pure Krishna consciousness. Have no doubt. It doesn't matter where you're starting from. It doesn't matter what disqualifications, how many times you've fallen away, that if you continue with the process of Krishna consciousness, dil diligently trying to do what you, your level best, Krishna will promote you to the stage of pure Krishna consciousness. And here's the ultimate of all advice. And this is given, this very phrase, chant without stoppage is given by Prabhupada in the verse I quoted earlier, Tri Pram Bhavati Dharmatma, from the Bhagavad Gita 331. Correct? 331. 931. 
in which he says, whatever, uh, whatever slip up one has in devotional service, small or big, said it can be overcome by chanting without stoppage. And incidentally, the Shastra says, Nam aparada yuktanam, nam an yeva harantyagam, avishrani prayuktani, tanye varta karani cha. That if you're, an, if you're a, doing offensive chanting, what is the cure? Don't stop chanting. <laughs> that sounds contradictory, but if you're chanting offensively, if you go on chanting without stopping, you will come to the stage of clearing. And then you'll come to the stage of pure chanting just by continuing. You'll overcome obstacles. So this is the number one piece of advice. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Now watch my hand because I'm counting. If all of you have learned how to count on your hand. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Bottom section of your little finger. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Middle section of the little finger. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So wherever you go, you have your ten spots here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You have, hopefully, ten spots on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do ten here. Keep one finger here. Do 10 more here, move this one down. You go all the way around, you'll know when you hit 100, and then just do eight more and you've got one round. And you can do that anytime, and you'll notice because your hands are so available. They're the most available things I can think of. You available? I'm available. Just use them and you can chant anytime. And if you like to get some uh, japa beads, some prayer beads, you can see Sundar Nanda. Sundar, stand up. He's our czar of chanting here. He'll assist you in your chanting. He'll give you some beads that you can chant on at home. And he'll tell you how to start a home practice of chanting Hare Krishna. And if you do that, all your problems will be solved. You won't uh, be in anxiety about your MCATs taking huge exams. You will feel uh, happy uh, in the way that you deal with your kids, with your mom, your dad, uh, with your boss. You'll see the universe as being connected to Krishna everywhere you look. You'll see earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence as all parts of Krishna's energy. You'll feel Krishna's instruction from within your heart and feel ecstasy at every moment just by chanting Hare Krishna constantly. Okay? Yes? yes. yes. Okay, it's a deal. One text. We're counting down the minutes. We have seven more minutes until the offering. So we're going to chant for six and a half minutes. And right after this, yeah. uh, it, in, information coming from the internet, from one of the devotees online. Yeah, It's Bhakta Raphael from Miami. Hare Krishna Bhakta Raphael. He's talking about the takeaways. Be humble and attitude is everything. Are the two takeaways. Be humble and attitude is everything. Nice. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine 
Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Shivasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna. 
Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Prikishori Harmonium. Mukadavin Kartals. For the Hare Krishna Singers. Gopal Varande. Thai Gaur Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Hari Bol, Thai Gaur Hari Lovely to see everyone tonight. Thank you very much for coming.